Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Join us for fresh perspectives by medical experts and advocates as we explore the spectrum of migraine and dig deeper into this complex disease. Theranica CEO Alone Irony talks to us about their wearable therapeutic pain treatment device, the Nerivio, explaining how it differs from a TENS unit and how it works to relieve migraine symptoms. He also reports on efficacy and safety findings and explains how patients can get the device. This presentation was originally published at the Migraine Symposium on October 3rd, 2020. Hi, everybody. I'm going to introduce the Nerivio to you today. So the Nerivio is a new wearable for the acute treatment of migraine. It was authorized by the FDA in 2019. It's, uh, it requires a physician prescription. And the mechanism of action deploys a technology that is called remote electrical neuromodulation, REN. I'm going to use this term throughout the, uh, the presentation, REN, REN, remote electrical neuromodulation. The mechanism of action is based on uh, electrical waveform that triggers an endogenous descending pain inhibition mechanism in the brainstem that's called conditioned pain modulation, CPM. The Nerivio is a disposable device in the sense that every device is good for treating 12 migraines. Every treatment uh, is 45 minutes, and then you uh, recycle the device. Uh, it is placed on the upper arm, as you can see in the picture, upon the onset of headache or aura uh, migraine symptoms, and it is fully operated by a smartphone application that is available free of charge over the App Store or the Google Play Store. The application comes with an interactive migraine diary that is shareable with your healthcare provider. What I'm going to talk about today is how the device works. I'll share with you a lot of the clinical evidence that we've accumulated over the last uh, few years and talk about patient types and how to uh, effectively use the device. So let's start with the mechanism of action. So CPM is the name of the uh, mechanism in the brainstem, which is triggered by the Nerevio. It's an endogenous mechanism. So in this sense, the Nerevio really helps the patient help himself. Um, the principle is that uh, there is a, an existing pain, what we, what we call target pain. In this case, obviously, it's the headache uh, caused by uh, the migraine and also other symptoms, not only pain. And this target pain is inhibited by a second stimulus, which is remote. Uh, that's a very fundamental principle that the second stimulus would be provided remotely from the location of the first stimulus or the first uh, uh, pain. Um, so this, the remote stimulus has to be strong, but it can be, and it is, below the perceived pain threshold, which is individual, and we will talk about that later. Uh, the area in the brain where this all happens is the brainstem. Uh, so the signal from the device travels up the arm. Uh, arrives at the uh, brainstem where it triggers the CPM. The result of triggering the CPM is a global release of uh, serotonin and norepinephrine throughout the entire neural system. One question that uh, comes up frequently is, in what sense is th this device is different from a TENS unit? So as you can see in the table, there are a lot of differences. Actually, uh, other than uh, both types of devices having electrodes and based on electrical signal, they are quite different. So this table explains the differences, uh, and it compares the TENS and REN, uh, REN, the technology. So first of all, the mechanism of action. As I said before, TENS, TENS unit uh, deploys what's called gate theory of pain. It's a, an ascending pain inhibition, basically blocks the pain locally from uh, traveling uh, to the uh, neural system, to the central neural system, while REN is a descending inhibition. It actually um, receives the pain and then triggers a mechanism which uh, uh, spreads down and blocks uh, the pain from, from uh, coming up. Um, they are also different by the types of nerve fibers that are utilized by, by each one of them. TENS unit typically uh, recruits eight beta fibers, which are touch fibers, while uh, REN, the, the Nerivio in this case, deploys uh, C fibers and A delta fibers. These are nociceptive fibers, they, their role in the body or in their neural system is to transfer painful sensation. Yeah. In this case, the, the sensation of the Nerevio is sub it is below the pain threshold, while in the case of tense, it's just merely touch sensation. 
The location of the body, we, we talked about that, TENS is, has to be located exactly at the uh, location of the painful area in the body, while with REN, it's very important to locate the device remotely from the painful location. From the electrical standpoint, the waveform is very different. TENS unit would uh, deliver a signal that has between 40 uh, to 80 hertz cycles per second with pulses that typically would have a duration of between 50 up to 300 microseconds. In the case of Nerevio, uh, the frequency is higher between 100 and 120 hertz and the pulses are actually longer, 400 microseconds. The impact of the TENS unit is local, very limited to the location where you uh, place the TENS while with REN, it's a global impact over the entire neural system. Let's talk about safety. So um, the results that you see here are taken from the pivotal study that was uh, the basis for receiving the FDA authorization for the Nerevio. Uh, it was a double-blind placebo-controlled study with 252 patients participating. Um, and as you can see, first of all, uh, more than 96% of the patients did not have any device-related adverse events. All of the adverse events uh, that were reported were mild. They did not require any medical treatment, and they actually they were resolved shortly after the treatment. Uh, look at the graph. You can see that the, the percentage of each one of the uh, uh, different types of adverse events is very small. There's no difference or almost no difference between the active and the sham device. Um, by the way, there were no discontinuations of, of patients in the study because of any of these um, adverse events. You can see that all of them are local. Uh, you can see a redness, numbness, and things like that. None of these adverse events is systemic. And so with the review, there's no risk of abuse, no risk of drug-drug interaction, and no risk of medication overuse headache. With that, let's talk about uh, some of the efficacy results and efficacy aspects. So th these data is take are taken from the same study, the pivotal study. And so let's talk about pain, for, about headache. On the left-hand side, you see the two-hour result. So that's two hours after the start of the treatment, after applying the device. You have uh, a pair of graphs. One is showing the pain relief results. Pain relief meaning transition in two hours from moderate or severe down to mild or no pain. And uh, on the right-hand side, pain-free, complete disappearance of pain within two hours from starting the treatment. In both cases, you can see uh, high numbers on the green, low numbers on the black, which is the placebo device, uh, statistical significant, very large statistical significance between the two, which shows high efficacy. So that's two hours. On the right-hand side, you can see the sustained response uh, in terms of pain, 48 hours after the treatment, without taking medication, without um, retreating with the device, you can still see a very significant difference between the device and the placebo. So the efficacy uh, comes up uh, rapidly within two hours and, uh, and is sustained over 48 hours after the treatment. That was pain. Uh, migraine, obviously, as, as you know, has other symptoms. Sometimes they're called associated symptoms. Uh, so in this graph, you can see the results of the MBS relief. MBS uh, stands for most bothersome symptoms. It's any one of the three, nausea or vomiting, sensitivity to light, which is photophobia, and sensitivity to sound, phonophobia, which is defined by the patient as the most bothersome at the beginning of the treatment. And so two hours later, you can see the percentage of patients that report relief, significant relief of that particular uh, MBS or most bothersome symptom. And again, you can see statistical significance between the device and the uh, placebo device, which shows high efficacy. So that was the pivotal study. Over the couple of years since the pivotal study, uh, there were other studies that pretty much repeat the results. Uh, um, some of them are uh, explained here. Um, one study that was published in Frontiers in Neurology this year. Uh, demonstrate the reduction in uh, usage of, of acute medications for migraine by patients. So 117 patients, it's an open label extension of the previous study, which were uh, using medications at 84.6% of their attacks when they did not have the review. When they got the review, when the review was in their disposal, only 10% of them, or a little bit more than 10%, used uh, other medications. And with respect to efficacy, 
pain relief ratio was the same between the two periods with medication with the review, and pain relief actually increased, increased from 23% to 31%. So you can actually decrease or reduce the usage of medication, uh, not only without compromising on efficacy, but actually getting maybe even getting better results. There were two studies on chronic, in chronic migraine patients. This is one of them that has been published by now. Uh, it's a relatively a small study. It was published in Pain and Therapy this year. Basically, it showed that 73.7% out of the patient, 39 chronic migraine patients, achieved pain relief in at least 50% of all of their treatments. And they had a lot of treatment, treatments in this uh, study. Um, another evidence uh, uh, that was published in Pain Medicine this year is a real-world analysis uh, done on 1,400 patients, a lot of patients, focused on uh, consistent response across multiple attacks. A consistent response means the percentage of patients that report a certain uh, response, whether it's pain or, or uh, associated symptom, in at least 50% of their treatments. And so um, this study shows high efficacy in a, a serial of different symptoms, pain, sensitivity to light, sound, nausea, uh, return to normal fun functionality, and so on. And um, in terms of safety, only 0.5% uh, of the patients reported any adverse event. This is a more recent, this is, has not been published yet, but this is data on file that um, uh, was uh, collected from the Nerevio application from uh, 1800, almost 19, hundred patients in the United States. It uh, provides the, again, the consistent response of patients uh, with respect to pain relief, uh, pain-free, uh, improvement in functionality, return to normal functionality, and the disappearance of uh, associated symptoms. So what are the uh, aspects that should be uh, considered when you, um, when you think about whether or not using the Nerevio? One is the potential advantage of uh, the Nerevio in avoiding uh, the risk of medication overuse headache. Um, medication overuse headache uh, is caused by frequent use of acute medications. For migraine, it could be just uh, over-the-counter painkillers or prescribed medications. All of them basically, once they're used uh, in high frequency, uh, they, they are, they potentially can cause medication overuse headache. So the Thumb rule is that for uh, over-the-counter medication, using more than 15 days a month is considered a risk for MOH, for medication overuse headache, and for prescribed medication such as triptans, using uh, more than 10 days per month would, put, would place the, the patient in a risk of MOH. Um, evidence shows that 15% of the patients, uh, of migraine patients, uh, have medication overuse. And this is a vicious cycle. A patient can start with low frequency uh, episodic migraine, start taking medications that would increase the frequency, again, not always, but potentially increase the frequency to high episodic, more medication or medications are consumed, and then eventually resulting in chronic migraine. Uh, so these are some of the risks of consuming um, too much medication. And obviously, one way to avoid that is to use a non-pharmacological acute therapy. This is a, an insight of the AMCP, the, this is the results or the publication of a conference that was held earlier this year and was published around March or April. And it compares new acute treatments of migraine, uh, three different uh, medications, the lasmiditan, the Rimagipant, and the Ubrogipant, and then the, the Nerevio. You can take a look, the results are taken from papers that are uh, publicly available. Of course, this is not a head-to-head -head comparison. In, we have to be careful about comparing these results, but take a look at the numbers, the nominal numbers of pain-free results in the bottom line, and also the difference between the active and the placebo device or, or drug, which is called the, the, uh, the net medical benefit or the net clinical benefit of each one of the therapies. So which patients are actually more adequate or, or better for uh, using uh, Nerevio? So several types. Uh, the first type are simply patients who do not get consistent efficacy from their acute medications. Uh, Nerevio deploys a different mechanism of action. So in many cases, we thought we saw that patients that could not or did not respond to drugs, prescribed drugs or over-the-counter drugs actually responded to Nerevio. 
So that's one type of patient. Second type of patients are patients who have all kinds of contraindications to uh, medications, simply cannot, are not allowed to use these medications. For example, triptans are contraindicated in patients with uh, coronary spasms, other uh, heart failures, um, blood pressure problems, and so on. Uh, most of the triptans are also contraindicated during pregnancy and breastfeeding. NSAID are contraindicated in patients with renal damage uh, and other uh, gastrointestinal problems. So in those cases, a non-pharmacological uh, therapy would be prefer preferred or could be preferred. And obviously, the Nerevio is an effective and safe uh, option for that. Two other types of patients. Uh, there are patients that simply uh, that do not have contraindications but do not tolerate the side effects of medications. Uh, for example, many patients experience uh, drowsiness after uh, consuming triptan. That obviously reduces their energy, makes it difficult for them to function normally after consuming triptan. Nervio has a very high safety profile, as you, as you saw before, with no systemic side effects and with a very low percentage of mild local side effects. So that could be a good alternative for those patients. Um, Another, patient, another type of patients are patients that simply prefer uh, not to use drugs. There are some patients prefer not to take medications, either because they're pregnant or planning to get pregnant or just want to adopt a more natural, healthy way of living. So again, Nerevio is drug-free, non-invasive, non extremely safe, and would be a very good uh, option for these type of patients. Then uh, on the other side of the scale, there are patients who need to watch against MOH, medication overuse headache. So we discussed that. Uh, typically, uh, a maximum, the maximum dosage of most of the uh, prescribed medications for acute treatment of migraine is eight to 10 doses per month. However, there are a lot of patients that have more than eight or more than 10 headaches per, uh, headache days per month. What would they do? If they continue to uh, consume medications in the rest of the month, they would put themselves uh, at risk for MOH. So these patients can actually incorporate the review into their usual care as an adjunct. They can use on some days, they can use triptan or other medications. In other days, they can uh, apply the Nerevio. And by this, take care of themselves, treat themselves on every migraine, but uh, keep their uh, medication consumption below the threshold. And the final, the last type of patients are just new patients, uh, patients that are treated for migraine for the first time in their lives, especially young people who uh, start migraine. Um, a lot of physicians think that before starting with medication for a lifetime, a non-pharmacological approach may be offered. And I mentioned earlier the, uh, the application and the Nerevio migraine diary. So it's, it's actually more than just a diary. First of all, the American Headache Society and, and the International Headache Society recommend using a migraine diary for the purpose of better managing uh, migraine. Nerevio has a built-in diary that allows patients to track their migraine patterns, the outcomes of the treatments, and very easily share this information with their physicians of choice if, if they want to do so uh, with a click of a, on the screen. Uh, the Nerevio also, the Nerevio application also helps patients and physicians optimize their treatment strategy by providing them real-time data with patient-centered statistical analysis. You can see on the right-hand side, uh, the way that the data is presented by the Nerevio application, you can have a statistical analysis of your symptoms, of the outcomes of your symptoms a long time. And again, all this can be easily shared with your physician. And uh, on top of that, the Nerevio application follows the patients and is able to provide them, to provide them with tips on how to optimize their treatment, individual tips. Like for example, in this case, if the application notices that uh, patient uses the device too late, not within the first one hour, or uses intensity which is considered less than effective, that creates a message uh, as part of the application that provides this tip to the patient and guides the patient to adhere, to better adhere to the instructions of use and get better results from the treatment. How can you access, how can patients access the review? First of all, every licensed healthcare provider can prescribe the review. It doesn't require a neurologist or a headache specialist. Every licensed uh, ACP can, can provide that. Prescriptions are available on the internet. You can see the, the link over there. Um, and uh, signed prescriptions are sent to any one of our partner specialty pharmacies and are delivered to the patient home within one to three days. 
The review is also available since uh, April of this year online uh, in certain telemedicine platform. Uh, Cove and Upscript are examples so patients can go online, can get an appointment, a textual or audio uh, or video appointment with a physician and uh, can be prescribed in a review very quickly. Uh, you have the links here of Cove and Upscript and we have other partnerships in, in telemedicine. With respect to price and reimbursement, the Nerevio is uh, about to be reimbursed by major pairs very, very soon. So finally, uh, uh, three tips to remember when you treat with Nerevio. Number one, treat early. The best results with Nerevio are obtained if you treat yourself within one hour from the onset of the symptoms, headache or aura. Place the device properly. It's not very complicated on the outer part of the upper arm, as you can see here in the picture, about midway between the shoulder and the, elbow, and the elbow. And number three, optimize the electrical dosage. Set the intensity to uh, well perceived but not painful. So that's very easy. When the application, when the treatment starts, you have on the screen plus and minus bat buttons that allow you to uh, click, raise the intensity all the way from the default, which is very low, to intensity which, is, which feels strong but not painful. Just below the pain threshold, that would be the optimized uh, intensity to treat the review. So with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.